Hi, this is Sean at 7442 Analytics. Today I'm going to explain to you what the spiral is, how I came about it. I'm going to make it as quick as possible so it's not long and winded as my videos usually get. But here's the spiral clock. There's a logo on the Facebook page, the uh, Twitter account, LinkedIn account, whatever. All right, so that's the picture. And what I'm going to show you now is what the spiral is. And the reason why I'm showing you and, and uh, explaining what the, the spiral calculations are is that I bumped into some old stuff and I saw in YouTube videos about Walter Russell and went back and looked at my old Elliott Wave um, pieces and things like that, had some inquiries. So a lot of the, what I'm going to show you happened after I wrote the Market Bios Manual back in the late 80s and early 90s. Okay, and the idea back then is I wanted to apply Elliott Wave trading to see if it was worthwhile when I was a floor trader. So I constructed the time labeling tool, etc., to track market prices to identify waves one, two, three, four, five, etc. So I started out very young, 30 years ago at this. But a couple things hit me. You know, I had uh, some peculiar people contact me and some notions struck me, and I realized that there was actually a spiral out there. I want to find out how to compute it and what it meant. Okay, so I'll leave that up to you what your thinking is on it. But here's a spiral that's computed in hourly increments from 2012 to 2019 as you can see at the top of the page. Spirally hourly inc increments. And that singularity date is April 5th at 10 a.m in 2017 so the singularity will be reached so what is this spiral okay each of those dots is planet earth spiraling through space okay so on the left side is the sun that's the x-axis the y-axis is the height of earth's orbit spiraling orbit through space now in this case we can't see y. Okay, we can't see the we can we can't see x. We can only see x and y. So this would be the x and y frame. Okay, I want to set this in motion a little bit and uh, see if I can do that in Excel. Should be able to. So we follow the dots and we can see every hour that's Earth rotating through space. Now here is the here is the other element. What I describe as the retrograde phase is actually the nutation of Earth simultaneously spiraling through space. Got it? So the retrograde phase, as I explained in the past, is nutation of Earth wobbling through space. Okay. So do you, all right. So let's just keep it at that. Now, in order to um, look at it, see, we can only look at the X and Y frame. We have to. We can't see it in three dimensions. Right, so we can't see the spiral rotating in this direction when it rotates outward. That's caused by centrifugal force away from the sun. Centrifugal, what is called centrifugal? You get it. And then what happens is when the centrifugal force wanes in strength, you have rotation back to the singularity. And then it rotates in the opposite direction, which is centripetal force. So you have these opposite two forces. Centripetal going outward away from the sun. Centripetal going toward the sun. And the z-axis, the net z-axis, is the direction of Earth through, through space. It's what it is. Okay. Now, that's it in three dimensions. So... Uh, now, the idea is that, well, how are you going to figure out what's causing it? You know, what's causing that earth to spiral, okay, like that? And that's a big, those are, I can get the exact mileage for the, to figure out the diameter of that orbit. I think it's 150,000 miles, if I remember right. I haven't looked at it for a while, but uh, probably 10 years. So I had the uh, notion, I want to find out also what's causing earth to spiral like that, and that would be the pulses. So what you see in this image, is it the Holy Grail? I don't know. I don't know. 
but you see when it goes red, it's centrifugal force, centrifugal gravity pulling the Earth away from the Sun. When it gets into the blue frame, it's uh, going toward the Sun. So what you see here is a three-dimensional um, uh, field, which is Earth's gravitational field. Here we can rotate it, see it in three dimensions. Okay, now what's going to happen is our Iger Pro is going to freeze. So that's pretty much it, but um, a couple unique things happened to me. What I did to determine it is I came up with the idea or something struck me to say, you know, there's a way to actually compute that Fibonacci spiral, and I didn't know exactly what it meant, but I came across the work of uh, physicists in black hole electrodynamics, okay? And one of them was Kip Thorne. I have all of Kip's paperwork explaining uh, the pleural toroidal field. It's very technical. He's at Caltech, renowned scientist and physicist about black hole electrodynamics. And I have all of Kip's books explaining this and relativistic. So what, I'm look, what you're looking at is what they call a three by one formalism. Uh, formalism. Okay, so all pay, the, the calculations I got to create the spiral are all gleaned from these textbooks on black hole electrodynamics. So in other words, uh, one of the, the premises is that the rotation of the sun causes the um, elliptical plane known as uh, the orbital plane of all the planets. And Kip goes through these paper <laughs> explanations. I have his hard copies too, like I said. so. This disk around the sun is Earth's orbital plane. And then we have Z and X. So that would be the X axis in our spiral. Y would be the height of the spiral. And then Z would be along that direction. So it would go out centrifugally. When that wanes, you have the centripetal force of the sun. Pulling it back inward. Okay. All right, so that's basically you're talking about uh, black hole electrodynamics. I have thousands of papers in this topic. Again, I have all those books. And the exact calculations um, are in these papers, um, and I've got a lot of uh, papers on textbooks on converted to string theory. Okay, so uh, here's one paper. Um, black hole geometries and non commutative string theory. Smart guys like Ed Witten at MIT. They've come out with black, uh, with the, using brains, which are small little rubber button bands of matter, the smaller than the Planck scale. It's a theory. And uh, there's some explanations space time curvature of D3 brains. Those are uh, bigger brains, which are little rubber bands of matter. So, what I happened is. I had this idea that I could take raw NASA data and dump it through these equations just to find out what I came up with. So the end result was the spiral. And here are the exact equations. You see they go back and forth anti-clockwise, counterclockwise, um, etc. So here are all the equations. Sometimes you know people call them Minkowski metric, a rotating spiral with the in through you know threaded with the magnetic field would be a Kerr rotating black hole, Reisner, Nordstrom black hole, different varieties. But there are the equations that I use to compute the spiral based on their formalism. Got it? So it didn't happen in a day. It took a few years for me to figure out the way to get it right. And once I got all the raw data injected or run through, the raw NASA data run through these algorithms, the result then was um, the spiral. Got it? And I really didn't know what I was doing because I'm not a trained physicist or mathematician. It's really intricate science. So that's the end result. Again, what you see is Earth rotating through space. In this case, three dimensions. And the nice thing about Iger Pro is you can change the colors, make it look pretty, things like that. Rotation. Centripetal, centrifugal, and then the actual z-axis or the direction through space is here. You got it?
guy. Now, what you make of it is up to you. I'm giving, uh, I'm telling people what it is because I don't really use it anymore. I figure out a way to make things simpler and easier. The calculation is real hard. So my application of the spiral is a little obsolete. I don't use it anymore. You know, I have thousands of papers on the topic, piles of raw NASA data, etc. But I had one unique experience um, in here. I was going to show you that I have the hourly data from 1872 to 2082. So I don't expect to be alive by 2082. And then I also have the 10 minute data um, from 1970. And there's my template. So I create the spiral calculations with that. 1970 to the year 2100. So it took me a little while to download all this data from NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It took me days because it just doesn't, 10 minutes worth of all that data <laughs> takes more than about a half hour. It was days of downloading, make sure I had the right components in there to get the spiral result. And what I want to point out also, I had a, I had a, a unique, a lot of this was a, that my work was based on, you know, people suggesting things to me and say, well, let's go find out. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to show you some items that I thought you might find interesting. Um, uh, back around, right after about the time that I, I discovered how to compute the spiral, I was contacted out of the blue by a guy. He called me at work one day from Australia. He said, I bumped into your spiral calculations and showing how you're applying to market price behavior. And I said, well, that's nice. Hey, you know, it sounds good. Because I have your market bios manually, manual. But he said, you know what? Your stuff looks like the work of Walter Russell, the way it's expanding and contracting, the thrust of radiation and everything you, you try to allude to, it looks just like Walter Russell. And it had the same formalism where it was four by four. You get it? So it's like, wow, well, there's Walter Russell's uh, uh, chemical uh, table. Okay, a, sur a surrogate to the Mendelov, or I forgot all the stuff from high school chemistry, Mendelov table. So, I know there's a lot of interest, people with, uh, have an interest in Walter Russell's work. Um, I did, I looked into it, I found it very intriguing. But in my world, I really only cared about um, how, if it could be applied to market price behavior. And one of the things that I found interesting is that Walter Russell's artistic version matched Kip Thornton's version on black hole electrodynamics. In other words, um, an accretion disk, which is a black hole, um, well, that's what you have. Look, for example, the orbital plane of the planets, you know, it matched his exactly. So you had, um, you know, his formaliza uh, formalism for converting, um, uh, there's your black hole uh, ergosphere, things like that. But one of the things he has in here shot, talked about matter and radiation. I thought, wow, this matches Walter Russell's work because I read through that and you know the driving torque look this is right out of black hole electrodynamics from a renowned physicist at Caltech you know uh, okay Cal, uh, Kip Thorne so the driving torque with which matter spins up a black hole and the counter acting torque of radiation you see the curvature of labeled matter is the value d over d mm blah 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 so I've read through about 14,000 of these papers and refined uh, the algorithms, reading through the uh, black hole electrodynamics and black hole accretion disks. So that's pretty much it. See, it matched Walter Russell's work. Now, that's pretty much it. My explanation of what the spiral is, if you want to um, acquire it, the actual data for your own computations, if you're interested in it, how to do it, Right, spreadsheet, Iger Pro, free, contact me at info at 744 Analytics. And I'll give you all the equations in spreadsheet format with the raw data, either hourly or 10 minute increments. Okay, so in the past what I did is I built models to see if uh, the spiral is actually governing market price behavior with different gears and pieces and elements in there. Um, but it's yours now. Just all you have to do is, you know, simply... 
um, message me at info at 7442analytics.com and uh, you can get the same stuff. Okay, so you got a nice pretty colors. You can do an agar pro. In other words, this would augment moving away and toward the sun. So each dot would be planet Earth. And that's in hourly increments, but I can get it in 10 minute increments, to hourly increments. That's why I have it broken down. So I hope you like that explanation. It may be long and winded. You know, it turns like in that sometimes people want more explanations of what the spiral is. But you can contact me at info at 7442analytics.com if you want to find out more. If you have an interest in Walter Russell or uh, Elliott Wave, things like that, I can, I can uh, get you more information. And you can actually acquire the data in the spreadsheets. So thanks a lot from 7442analytics in the warehouse. Bye now.